Because remember, how old is my skin? Say 28 days. It's not 48 years. No, 28 days. My bones, about 9 months old. Okay, liver's about 6 weeks old. My blood's 120 days old. So my body is always being rebuilt. And is that true with everyone? Absolutely. So if my skin cannot repair, guess what we get? Eczema. We get abnormal skin. We get diseases of the skin. We get ulcerations of the skin. That's the dis-ease, a breakdown. Now, this is a simple chart, but it, it, it definitely it equates to life, like how your body works, to rot or not. Now, this, this is hugely important. Every medication slows or stops a metabolic process. We're talking about a condition tonight that doesn't exist in aboriginal cultures. It exists in this one. So obviously there's something wrong, because osteoporosis, that's a rotting of the bone. And let's not do that. Anti-seizure medications induce osteoporosis. Now this was out of the Journal of Neurology last year. It's long been known that anti-seizure medications used to con control epilepsy speed up the breakdown of bone, often leading to bone osteoporosis. Now they say something interesting. Supplementing with high levels of vitamin D, okay, or sunlight, okay, can stem lo loss of bones. Now anti-seizure medications gets what one of the number one side effects of vaccinations are. Seizures, seizures, huge. Um, we have, um, well right now, and again we do an entire talk on vaccinations, but how many vaccines is a kid today supposed to get? 10, 20, 30, 40, 74. 74 vaccinations. Now, since the most common side effect is epilepsy, are we seeing more and more kids taking anti-seizure medications? I'm not talking, even talking about adults. Okay, if you look at the military, it's horrible. They're losing a third of their recruits, okay, from seizures or diabetes, or, and they, they're literally given 12 to 15 vaccinations the first day they're there. So it's, that's not science, and I like science. I think science is important. But anti-seizure medications, antacids all antacids. Now this is proton pump inhibitors, but anything that decreases acid in your stomach causes your body to not absorb calcium. Remember, you got the mouth, you got the esophagus, you got the stomach. Inside of the stomach, <clears throat> the contents are so acidic that you could pour it on the carpet and it would burn right through. Now calcium and iron are absorbed right next to the stomach. As those contents go through this intestinal tract, they get less and less and less acidic. So then you get the C vitamins, okay, the D, the B vitamins are absorbed way down in the jejunum. Now if you look at this, as that stuff moves down through, the less acid you take in, the more iron deficiency and calcium deficiency you're going to get. So does anyone remember the commercials a few years ago? What do you want, Rolades with aluminum salt or Tums with calcium? It's what your body needs. Do you remember those? They don't right come out and lie and say, look, it's a calcium supplement. Although I actually had a couple of patients come in and say, yeah, my doctor prescribed me Tums for a calcium supplement. I go, wow, he's a moron. Um, because that's completely ignorant. You cannot mix a calcium supplement with an antacid and expect to get any absorption. It doesn't work that way. That's not anatomy of physiology. They, they're taught some anatomy. Now, look at this. The side effect of proton pump inhibitors, this is a very powerful antacid, but this is also true with Rolades, with Tums, with anything that's going to decrease it. Abdominal pain, diarrhea, fever, headache, and nausea. Is that normal for calcium deficiency and iron deficiency? Absolutely. Now, if you take this, is your body smart? Yes or yes? Your body's smart. So if you're calcium deficient and you need calcium for every muscle in the body, every muscle, there's a clue, every muscle in the body needs calcium. What's one of the most important muscles you've got? Heart. heart. Isn't that a good, it was a good hint. I know I'd help you out. Okay, so wait a second. So if your heart's not working, your body's being smart, it's going to go to the bone bank. Okay, it's going to pull calcium out. It's going to draw that calcium out into the bloodstream so that all the muscles work. Also, calcium, remember what calcium looks like? Big C, little a with a plus sign? That means it's a positive ion. So anything that makes the body acidic 
your body needs to balance that pH out. And if it balances the pH out, it's going to go to the bone bank, draw out calcium because it's a very abundant mineral, and that's going to lead to osteoporosis. Fosamax. This is evil incarnate. Wait, no, I'm sorry. This is a biphosphate drug. Now, now let's look at anatomy and physiology and not chemistry. Let's look at anatomy and physiology. Remember, you got cells that lay down bone, cells that tear up bone. Do we need that remodeling process? Absolutely. Okay. Osteoblast, osteoclast. So that remodeling, always building up, always tearing down, keeps the bones flexible and strong. Now, have you seen karate experts break a board with their hand? Absolutely. How can it do it? Because the bone is strong and flexible. Strong and flexible. That's amazing. Now, they came up with an idea to stop this, and they have a biphosphate drug. And what this drug does, it stops the tear down process, it also stops the build up process. But what's neat is, after you take it, when you get your bone on a bone densimeter, the bones appear denser. Oh, so it must make the bones denser. No, not really. According to Cornell Hospital, or uh, New York Presbyterian, the long-term use of osteoporosis drugs, known as biphosphates, can actually weaken bones by impairing their ability to heal, leading to fractures. What? Wait a second. This is a drug designed to strengthen bones and make them more dense, and it causes more fractures? Okay, can anyone do a good homer? No! Oh! Okay. Well, the correlation with fractures has so far only emerged in Fosamax. Why? Because that's been around forever. Researchers noted that biphosphate drugs are less widely prescribed and have not been on the market as long, so the effects may not have had time to show up. Hormone replacement therapy, remember that disaster of the 70s, billed as a youth drug? They said it strengthened bones, will strengthen your body from cancer, and uh, lead to less heart disease. Then they find out caused heart disease, did nothing for the bones, and increased your risk of cancer. They did that in sanity for 30 years. They passed out antibiotics for 40 years for ear infections. They just stopped it last year. This is an insanity that needs to be stopped now. If you take a bone, bone strengthening drug like Fosamax or Boniva, you're going to have problems with the generated of the jaw. You're going to have problems with increased fracture rates. So is that bad or bad? Good, just checking. Now this is mind-boggling. This is actually an advertisement, okay, out of a magazine. Now I used this last week when we we're talking about um, uh, natural antibiotics, but this one here, better all over: aches, pain, sore throat, toothache, aches, ear, Advil. Now this is a study of the Journal of Epidemiology. Now Advil, along with Motrin and Tylenol, and by, and by the way, did they just remove infant Tylenol from the shelves? Okay. Uh, last year, and why would they do that? They say people were over-medicating their children. Yeah, yeah so, so it was killing kids, okay, and they took it off the market. Okay, and that was on the market for, what, 10 years, 15 years? Okay, well, this Journal of Epidemiology includes ibuprofen drugs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, Motrin and Advil, Tylenol is also in there. Um, this means that it's increased risk of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. This means it causes cancer. This means Advil can cause cancer. Okay, so it's not effective for that. But let's, let's, don't stop there yet. Again, ibuprofen, this is the American Heart Association. They say that aspirin and ibuprofen are strongly associated with reflux disease. Wait a second. That means that this causes reflux disease and can lead to cancer. Is that an appropriate medication to give to a child? No, is it appropriate for an adult? No. no. Will this lead to, to osteoporosis? Yeah. Absolutely. If you're causing reflux disease, you're changing your acid-base acid balance, you're changing the pH. Absolutely. So is this a dangerous drug? Wait a second. Does this mean Tylenol, Motrin, Advil, Aspirin are all dangerous drugs associated with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, cancer? Okay. Yes. Yes.